Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 191 here with the Shade Tree Survivalist. Um, got a request to do a video on iron sights and how you take the iron sights and you um, you zero them because the directions they got quite lengthy. Okay, this is what comes with your brand new M1A, and this is an excerpt from the book. Um, uh, the uh, Complete Owner's Guide by Scott A. Duff and John M. Miller. Uh, reprinted with permission from the February 1997 American Rifleman. Well, the book, The Complete Owner's Guide, I've got it. And um, I figured what I would do is use the, the actual ones that come with a new M1A rifle. They are a little bit of a pain in the damn neck. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't zeroed iron sights on an M1A in quite a few years. And when I did, old Betsy resided in this very wood, very uh, wood stock right here. And I had it wrapped with some uh, fabric um, cling wrap of some type. It was camouflage cling wrap. I have looked for that stuff for years and um, haven't been able to find any more of it. But this is a perfect opportunity to get reacquainted with the iron sights on these rifles. They are freaking tremendous. Um, matter of fact, they're probably some of the best, uh, well, most uh, well thought out and durable iron sights of any rifle platform anywhere on the planet. Of course, everybody nowadays uses telescopic sights of some type, red, uh, red dots and so forth, but iron sights, um, I do not want any type of semi-automatic rifle that does not have them. First things first, you need a, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's walk over there and I'll show you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you need a target similar to this right here. Those are exactly one inch, each of those squares. And um, it gives you reference points all the way around so you can uh, um, zero it the first time and then re-zero it as you shift from side to side to side and what i mean is you have five different targets on here okay uh, primary bullseye of course in the center and then you got the smaller ones and then of course you got even smaller red dots depends on your uh, sighting system as whether you can see it the main one in the center there that's the one we're going to be shooting for and i've got the little uh discs the sticky disc that you can um cover up the holes and do it again but it will give you an exact uh, measurement at a hundred yard range uh, each uh, square is one minute of angle okay it's one inch at a hundred yards that's one minute of angle so um i don't have access to a range today that i feel like messing around with to do the hundred yards and what i'm gonna do is a battle zero not an exact zero and a battle zero once you're set can give you can set your sights and they'll be very accurate from zero out to 400 yards with a very minimum of having to adjust and i'll go through that here in just a few moments but you need to walk off or measure off 25 yards you can hear the water in the ditch behind me still running see my backpack out there and you can see the snout of the rifle way over there that's 25 yards from where i'm standing right now by the target and 25 yards don't seem like much until you walk it off that's 25 steps to the front of that backpack okay so let's walk it off again on camera just to verify that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four and actually twenty five so i'm a little short uh right here so i'm gonna mark it and then move my all my supplies and so forth to the rear okay what else do you need of course you need the rifle a uh, loaded magazine with the ammunition you intend to shoot 
you need a uh, sock to put under the toe of the uh, the heel, the toe of the uh, stock, so you can raise or lower it. Um, some type of roll or backpack to lay the front of the rifle on if you don't have a bipod in order to have a very steady shooting platform. And of course you need uh, one Allen bit. Let me see what that is. One seven sixty fourth Allen wrench, Allen bit. Okay. And you need a flathead bit also so you can uh, set the rear sight once you've got your, your uh, elevation and so forth. You can set your zero. And a good wide one is really what we need. So I'll get this one out. This is the second to the largest I've got. So you'll need that. And I grabbed the wrong magazine. Let me go grab a loaded, the correct loaded magazine, and we shall start. And this is a quick reminder on the, when it comes to the front side, as long as you don't, your rear side is stationary. That center down there. You don't move this. In order to get your shots to go left, you got to move the sight to the right just a touch. Okay? If you want the shots to go to the right, you move it to the left. It's, it's ass backwards. It's like turning the steering wheel back in a truck up. It's counterproductive or counterintuitive, I should say, not counterproductive. Okay, Federal 147 grain full metal jacket sock pasties to cover up your holes screwdriver with the correct the two correct bits your instructions I don't have a drill sergeant here to fuss at me so uh, first thing you need to do of course before you even load the rifle is to check that your uh rear side is in the very center okay your windage knob is your right knob in my case the strong hand knob is on the right hand side and it is set at zero okay second thing let me see that's the first thing we're going to work on just the windage not the elevation now here's the deal i don't with this stop because the rear uh because of this butt plate it's not the correct one and i don't have the correct screws i cannot attach the rear of a shooting sling so this this may or may not work out too damn hot and if it don't you'll never see this video Okay, so what we're going to do first is fire a three-shot group at the bullseye in the center and see if we can get it uh, going at least in the center of the target. If it's off to the left a little bit or off to the right a little bit, then I'll have to adjust that front sight before we do anything else. Um, and then we'll worry about our elevation up and down. And with this backpack, I'm not sure <clears throat> how well it's really going to work out because it's sort of sloped here at the front. Yeah, I'm going to end up having to get muddy. That ain't gonna work. <clears throat> All right, let's hope this works better. Oh, it rained here this morning, and I just don't particularly feel like getting too damn wet.
Got a four wheeler coming by. Don't want to scare them to damn death. Driving a little beetle. The new Volkswagen's bug. Got her head cocked back like she can't see over the steering wheel. I think she need to move her damn seat forward a touch. Okay. All right, let's go see what we got. Well, that's not too shabby, but it's very low. 25 yards. And if it wasn't for that one damn pulled shot, that'd be a damn good group. What do y'all think? And you know what I didn't do? Grab the damn pasties. You know, ladies and gentlemen, if that one shot had come down here and planted it with the other two, that would have that'd have been a hell of a damn group. That dime will completely cover those two holes. <laughs> Oh, shit. But it's two fingers away. Oh, well. Yeah, back in the day, those guys, all they did is shoot iron sights. They probably could have turned in one hell of a damn tight group. Oh, well. Let me paste it up. All right. We got it about a half an inch to the left of center. Maybe not quite that much. And it says... <sighs> move the front sight eight thousandths. We'll move the shot group one inch at 100 yards. So I think eight thousandths. I'll go four thousandths. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the only way I've got to measure anything nearly that accurately is this... Uh, dial, um, not dial, got this uh, um, caliper from uh, Hornady. That's the only thing, but what you can do is you're roll, pushing it out. Watch that right here at the bottom. Uh, that's 60 thousandths. And that is 5 thousandths. You can barely feel that. So we'll go back 4,000. I mean, it'll barely, I mean, you won't even be able to see it. That's how imperceptible it will be. So what the hell I do with the damn, uh-huh. See if I can get this thing into the shot. First things first, yes indeed, don't be an idiot. I know damn good and well I am not 10 foot tall and bulletproof. First things first, eject that live round out of the chamber and then put it back in the magazine. Do not try to single load a semi-automatic weapon of any kind 
It is designed to be loaded out of the magazine. If you do that, you will have a slam fire and blow the damn gun up, okay? So don't do it. Second thing is, gonna take our little uh, hex driver and loosen that nut. Let, let, righty tighty, lefty loosey, remember? This is very, you got to be damn careful because you can easily move it. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I'm going to have to stand it up. This is gonna be a pain in the damn ass. Yep. <clears throat> Trying to measure that damn, they should have some type of a, some damn way of doing this. Trial and error, ladies and gents. That's probably way too damn much. Probably way too damn much. I don't see any other way of pushing it over. I just don't. Not and it actually work. So, we shall see what we have got. Okay, eyes and ears, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't wear hearing protection, you're an idiot. If you don't wear eye protection with a grand style M1A, M14, or real deal M1, and that free floating firing pin, and you're not shooting military ammunition, which this is supposed to be, um, that free floating firing pin can set off what is called a slam fire and blow the damn rifle up. They don't send those warnings out with a brand new weapon unless there's that possibility. Alright, safety is on. Let's see. Oh. All right. We're going to hit the bottom. Left hand. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll go for the center one.
All right, let's see what we got. Well, apparently let it bobble up and down a little bit, but hey, we got a vertical line and I moved it a whole damn inch. <laughs> well, about an inch and a half, but hell, hell, damn. So, we got to move it back a touch to the left. All right, third string. I think we're gonna hit it just one damn shot though, just to see. I barely tiny moved it, but my what I thought I was gonna be able to do with that damn caliper didn't work, so just having to do the best we can, eyeball it. Well, I ain't sure if I wiggled that much, but it looks like it moved over roughly half an inch. Because of these two shots, it was one here and one here. So one here and one here. So, let's see what happens. I'll move it a tiny bit more. All right. And, ladies and gentlemen, my bean bag, I'm using at the rear of the stock, was made out of a freaking GI wool sock. It's knotted up here at the top, but that's uh, those airsoft, round airsoft plastic pellets, the round ones. That's what I'm using. This is a roll of uh, rope and uh lightweight wool gi sleeping bag i found from some found somewhere I didn't jack around in the damn chamber. <laughs> that caught me off guard. I bet that was shit. Well, must have pulled every damn one of them a touch. Because we had this one flyer that's behind this. And these two in that first shot group. And then two here and one there. And then one, we got it back, we got it centered. And we got one flyer, but we got it walking higher. But I think we got it centered. I think that's the one that surprised me. So at least we got her centered up. I ain't touching that thing. I may end up tapping it, uh, skinning it up somehow or another right there at that edge with a, something, a, a punch or something so I know exactly where it is. But man, oh man. Hey, at least we got her centered up. Now we got to worry about the hard part. 
getting it to rise up. We want it an inch and a quarter above the bullseye. That gives us a 200 yard zero and also gives us a battle zero. So let's put these up and then we'll start working on the rear side. I had it set right at 200 yards. That dude needs to be zeroed out. Oh, that dude's off by a mile. That's the lowest it'll go. Yeah. I think that's half inch per. And we gotta go, what, six or eight? That's 12 clicks up. All right, let me read this to you now. To obtain a battle zero, fire the rifle at a small aiming point set at 25 yards. That's what we've done. Adjust the elevation knob so the shot group is centered one and a quarter above the point of aim for 30-06 Springfield and one and 13 sixteenths for 762 times 51 NATO. This setting should allow hits on targets at ranges from zero to 400 yards. After your rear rifle has been zero, you may want to paint, apply paint or fingernail polish to the rear sight knobs and receiver to mark the setting. All right. Let's see if we even got it close to the center of that damn target. wish we had a damn better way of doing this. I'm spoiled by that damn bipod, y'all. Damn safety is st if. I got a surprise break on all three of those shots. I'll be dead on the damn money if my elevation's right. Let's see. All right, we got a hell of a group going right here. They're inside each other at the bottom. And then we got one flyer as usual, never fails. So we're gonna say it's two inches needs to go up two inches so that's four clicks let's call it five six six clicks should put me well seven clicks yeah seven clicks up pasties on there so maybe I don't screw this up too damn bad
Damn, that thing's sweet. Y'all say what you want about your rifle, and I'm glad you love it and all, but hey, I'm a, <laughs> that son of a bitch is sweet. <clears throat> Make your sticker pack out, I just promise you. So, I forgot to damn click the damn, add the seven clicks to it. So we're down there in the bottom with a, one, a ragged hole. And that earlier, I think that, that was an earlier flyer. I got it here on video so I can go back and, and compare, but. <laughs> okay, so we just blew away three rounds for nothing for practice, but uh, that ain't bad. <laughs> I mean, damn. Uh, behind the target, above the target. You see my little backpack, the blob out there? Yeah. I mean, that ain't no great shooting by no stretch, 25 yards, but. I like that one hole kind of stuff. Y'all get your shotgun patterns all you want. I think I like that one hole. Seven clicks, he says. Seven clicks. Well, I got a little bit of ammo left. This better work. I think I'll take it to eight. Call it good. I'd rather have it a tiny bit high. That sixteenth of a damn inch. How you gonna split that? Eight. I can't read these damn things. I need to get some of that, that damn grease paint stuff and put in there. I've seen guys do that. I, I gotta get some damn glasses. Blind as a bat, up close. Over yonder, not so much. More shot, damn it. And that's the last shot. Chamber's open. Damn, that's purdy. Purdy, 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 purdy. Always got to have that one damn flyer. Okay, we got the one right here in the black. And then we got these two there a little high. So we need to go down one click, I think. And we will call that good. Which I don't know. Because the top of that bullseye. Yeah. I think I'll leave that. Think I will leave that. What do y'all think, guys? Because she sent it up, other than that one damn flyer. And if that damn thing had landed right there with those two, I'd have had another ragged damn hole like that one. Damn. And that's just junk ammo, ladies and gentlemen. That's that American Eagle from Federal. 147 or 149. I never can remember the damn grains of the damn thing. But it's a $13.99 a box stuff. That's what I was shooting. And I mean, you know, out at 100 yards, it's going to open wide up. But uh, that ain't bad. For iron sights, for some gun with 47-year-old eyeballs who needs reading glasses. Damn it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Like it, like it, love it, love it.